So we have an Albion Knight sword here. We're going to go ford a river. We're going to leave it in the rain for a day and we are going to see what happens. Oh, and that is cold. That's properly wet now. Well, let's find out. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back with another film looking at the quality of medieval goods, but actually from a slightly different perspective. This is going to be fun. It's, it's been filmed over two days or will be filmed over two days. You'll understand why afterwards. But the thing is, I've been looking at the quality of medieval goods. They made some fantastic stuff. Amazing, fantastic quality. They really did. You can go to museums, you can see it. None of it's perfect. I use that word carefully. None of it is perfect but it is fantastically good. But they also made complete junk, and you'll see that in museums too. But what is intriguing actually is that even when the work is of a really good quality, often it just can't be durable. So many of the knife sheaths are of one millimeter leather. That's really thin, really thin. Some of them are two, you know, I get it, better. But one millimeter, it's not gonna be durable. So it's one of the reasons that I tend to do it with two layers of leather. And that means that it, it's inherently fairly stiff. You know, it feels like a piece of quality and it feels like it's gonna last and it will last. But theirs weren't necessarily like that. A modern knife maker generally now will make the blade, make the fittings, make the handle, usually will make the leather sheath as well and any fittings that go on the sheath. In medieval times, that was entirely different. A cutler was actually just an assembler. In the modern language now, cutlers make knives. They didn't in medieval times. They would buy a blade from a bladesmith. They would get handles made from a, a woodworker, a bodger, whatever. They would have sheaths made by a cordwainer. They'd have the fittings made by a jeweler, right? All of these things are different trades. If there's any engraving, any gilding, different trades. So actually, even just a simple dagger might go through four or five people's hands. Now, if you make a dagger and you're churning them out and that's your job, you're just churning the daggers out, you're just doing it, you're just doing it. Can you get a leather sheath individually made for each dagger? And the answer is you probably can't, not in an easy way. If it's a high status piece, yes. If it's just a work -a day working man's knife, no. So the thing is, it's just like the blades fitting the guards that I talked about in the, the first of these films, is you take a knife and you take a sheath and you go, kind of fits, good enough, I'll have it. Modernize, that's appalling, right? Absolutely awful. Historically, it's just what happened. So if you take a piece like this rondel dagger here, this twisted one, typically English style rondel dagger, uh, 15th century, lovely piece, again, a robust blade. Well, you know what, that's a bit loose. Now the first question is, does it matter? And it's rather obviously an important question because you do not want your dagger to fall out. Well, one of the medieval things which often seems odd to us now is we like our knife to be really securely attached to the belt. It really wasn't always like that. Sometimes it would go through the belt, sometimes it would go through the pouch, either through the loops or back down here. I've done videos about that, I'll link those as well but mostly they're hung on thongs, okay? Just like that. Now you would think, awful way to wear a knife. Actually, when you move, the knife moves. It doesn't tip upside down. But you know what? Maybe you don't like that. And that's understandable. But the thing is, they knew too, that if you danced, you took your knife off, you took it out. You know, if you're running, you run, anybody who's run with a knife or a sword, you don't just run you run with your hand on it because otherwise it's just gonna bounce around and it's annoying because it's hanging on thongs and it will fall off. It's just what you do. So it's not a big deal because actually you don't suddenly decide to do a handstand in a millisecond. That's not life, right? You put your hand on it. That's just what they did. It's also completely solvable and it was completely solvable for us and completely solvable for them. So I'll just show you how to deal with that if you don't like it. In this particular case, the knife sheath it's just a little bit loose. Can you see that there? So there's a bit of bag in there, a bit of gap. Now you can take that out by just taking a bit of stout leather or even a bit of wood and you just push it into the back there and you work out what thickness you want and see how that feels. Well, that feels pretty tight. So now you can just glue that in and trim it off afterwards. What glue? Well, you can use epoxy. Epoxy is brilliant for leather, loves it. You can use that sort of foaming 
wood glue that we got now, the polyurethane foaming wood glue, probably be a bit messy. Wouldn't advise it, but it would work. You could use PVA, you know, just the regular white wood glue. Don't use it, really don't use it. Because the problem is it's acidic. You can smell it actually. And if that touches the, the steel, it will rust it, all right? So don't use that. So another one I'm just gonna do for speed now is just cyanoacrylate. Uh, so super glue, basically, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just putting a bit of this and it's the thick stuff, right? Not the runny stuff, it's the thick stuff. You'll get it in hardware shops. So I've just got a bit on there. And then for the sake of speed, I've got an activator as well. So that's a catalyst, makes it go off fast. Just gonna slip that in there. I'm not gonna touch it, so it's not gonna go off yet. It will do when I touch it. Pushing the knife back in and then just holding it down. A few seconds have passed, but if it's epoxy, it might be five minutes, might be a day, whatever it is. And now I'm just gonna trim off this excess leather here. And that's it. So now the knife is a beautiful fit. So now everybody's completely happy. Are they? Well, the thing is, you have to ask yourself a question now, because unusually for England, it's not raining today. Hurrah, it's quite sunny, but it does rain. Now, if that is sitting there on your hip, what if it rains? Because the thing is, leather can be really quite sticky, quite bindy when it gets wet. And the more that leather, the tighter that leather is in contact with your blade, the more when it gets wet, the more it's gonna stick, the harder it is to draw. Because these blades are hung on thongs, it basically becomes a two-handed operation to remove the knife. You could do it, you know, yank it off in a, in a hurry. But then actually what happens if you break the thong? And now suddenly you've got your offensive weapon with the sheath on it. It's a two-handed draw. If you can be confident that your knife will come out of its sheath as a one-handed draw, suddenly it's a one-handed draw again, wet or dry. So the thing is, we make the assumption that they want the knife scabbard to be really tight. They want it to be good. But actually, that's not necessarily the case. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't like loose sheaths either. I like them to be tight. I like them to be well molded to the knife. I, I like them to look really considered, to look fabulous. But just because I like it doesn't mean that they liked it. Just because I want it doesn't mean that they wanted it. Just because I can have it doesn't mean that they could have it. Don't make these assumptions. You can't make the assumptions. What we can see is that a lot of stuff was, you know, questionably made and questionably fitting. I think that is also true. And now we come to sword scabbards. And this is where it becomes a little bit interesting. So we have an Albion Knight sword here. The reason actually is that this one is a little bit battered. So I don't worry about it too much. If it rusts, it's not the end of the world. But we now have Todd's Workshop scabbard. Uh, made for it. Poplar, poplar wood core, so it was often poplar or birch. They were unlined, right? Medieval sword scabbards were almost always unlined. Sometimes wool, very rarely. So that tended to be an earlier thing. So what you've got is wood in contact with the blade. If you make this really tight to the blade, really nice to the blade, and this one is, right? Look at this, doesn't come out. Move it, what's that? Half inch, 12 millimeters, it comes. So actually that in modern sense is probably a really well fitted sword. You know, it's not coming out, right? I can run around with it. Even if I don't put my hand on it, it's not coming out. Rain, what happens when it gets wet? Now, I don't know the answer to what I'm just about to do, right? I've never done this, but you know what? I'm doing it so you don't have to. We're gonna go forward a river. We're gonna leave it in the rain for a day and we are gonna see what happens. So of course, you know, high-born nobles and so on, you know, they're not gonna go fording rivers. Men at arms, on the other hand, absolutely required. So you know what? For the sake of science, for the sake of you, to stop you having to do it, I'm gonna do it for you. What happens when I ford a river with my sword? Yeah, sure, I could hold it over my head, but what about my shield? What about my other kit? What about my bedroll, right? Who knows what's gonna happen? I don't know what happened. Let's find out. Oh dear. Oh, and that is cold. Right, so we're gonna assume huh, that that doesn't stay dry. 
Well, that's properly wet now. Oh, that's fast. So let's go to the deep bit. Oh, that's cold. And fast. And I'm assuming that doesn't stay dry. Ooh. And out. But you know what? This is a fast moving river. Because it's been raining a lot. So that's why it's a two-parter. We're gonna leave it in the rain overnight. And then in our fictitious man at arms world, it rained all night. See you tomorrow. Our poor man at arms, horrible campaign this, he's been rained on all night. So got dropped in a river, he's got rained on. What's happened? Well, let's find out. So you can still get the sword out, which is good, but it really has bound up. So now it is not the one-handed easy draw that I would like. It is in fact a, and that's actually, sorry, that's another interesting thing. I hadn't occurred to me this, is that is one thing, but actually the biomechanics, the way it works, that is not as easy a pull, in fact. So although I can open it here, it's all right, there, it's actually quite an effort. And the thing is, any, any slow movement, half a second, quarter of a second, suddenly you are handing an advantage to your opponent where there was no advantage before. So do you want your scabbards super tight? I don't think you do. I think you just want a little bit of freedom. So if you get rained on in a campaign, it's not the end of your life as well. But it is the end of the film. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. But don't forget, toddcutler.com, fantastic site. Toddsworkshop.com for scabbards like this, fantastic site. Come visit, help support us, sign up for your bell notifications, sign up for the newsletters, sign up for everything, sign up for the channel. Anyway, we'll see you again another time, I hope. Thanks. I'm back now because this is a couple of weeks later, in fact, and this is now thoroughly dried out. Sword's a bit rustier than it once was. Check this out. It doesn't fit beautifully anymore. So it's in, getting it out. Not so easy. See ya. Yeah. <laughs>